Okay, so the topic of this video will be the digestive system. So let's get started. So when we think about the digestive system, this is the body system that is responsible for the digestion of food and more importantly, the absorption of the nutrients. You know, you've probably all heard the expression of you are what you eat. Well, this very much rings true because the proteins, the lipids, the nucleic acids, the carbohydrates that we create all come from the proteins and the lipids and the nucleic acids and the carbohydrates that are in the food that we eat. So you literally are what you eat. You know, our digestive system is over 30 feet in length if stretched out, you know, in one straight line here. And notice how in the diagram there's a lot of twists and turns. And this is going to be really important to provide additional surface area in order to absorb the most possible nutrients. And when we get into the notes on the small intestine, I think this will be even more evident. Well, the digestion process begins in the mouth because that's where our salivary glands are. And so digestion even begins before we take our first bite because when we see foods and we know we're about to start eating, well, our salivary glands start to release saliva. There are three major salivary glands, the parotid, the parotid gland, the submandibular gland, and the sublingual gland. Well, in general, these glands will release and secrete water, mucus, amylase. Amylase is an enzyme that helps to break down much of the starchy foods that we consume. The starch in the foods that we eat are converted and broken down into glucose. So the role of our teeth is to help break the food into smaller pieces and also to mix the food with saliva. So here's a small bite of an apple and as we chew that apple is broken into smaller pieces and also mixed with the saliva that was just previously mentioned. And ultimately your tongue will ultimately push the food to your teeth and then ultimately to the back of your throat. The back area of your throat is called the pharynx. So there we have the black dot in the picture. There's the ball of food that we've uh, just chewed and our tongue has helped to push to the back of the throat. Now this ball of food that we're about to swallow is what is called a bolus. Now you may know that there's actually two tubes in the back of our throat. One of them is called the trachea, which leads to our lungs, and the other is called the esophagus, which leads to our stomach. So to prevent food from going down the trachea and into the lungs, there's a flap of tissue called the epiglottis here. I just symbolized it with this yellow line here. So when we swallow the food, the epiglottis will close sealing off the trachea. This way the food bolus, the lump of food, that ball of food can then enter into the esophagus and head down towards the stomach. So when we move into the esophagus area here, the, the esophagus is a muscular tube that connects the back of the throat called the pharynx to our stomach. So this tube that the bolus is traveling down, this is the esophagus. And there's a series of muscle contractions that will ultimately push that food bolus from the pharynx down to the stomach. And this wave of muscular contractions is what is called and what is known as peristalsis. So the, muscle, the muscular peristaltic contractions will push the bolus into the stomach. So now that the food bolus has made its way into the stomach, let's head there next. The stomach will release acids and enzymes to mechanically and chemically digest that food bolus. So mechanical digestion is when muscles of the stomach will twist and churn and mix that food with various acids and enzymes. The chemical breakdown and chemical digestion comes from the hydrochloric acid and the various enzymes that are released from your stomach. You know, one enzyme in particular that is of, of importance is an, an enzyme by the name of pepsin, which helps to break down our proteins. 
Now, if you've ever wondered, how come your stomach doesn't digest itself? Well, that's because your stomach has a layer of mucus that will coat the stomach lining. And every now and then, um, the mucus coating can be so thin and worn away that the hydrochloric acid will actually start to burn and break down and digest the stomach itself. And, and this is what is called a peptic ulcer, which obviously could be very painful. Uh, but let's actually focus on the digestion of our food. So the food bolus, now that it's been mixed and churned and, uh, and digested, it's now a soupy fluid of partially digested food that goes by the name of chyme. So chyme is what is now sitting in our stomach and will soon exit into the small intestines. And if we zoom on in, you can see the small intestine leads right into the, or the, excuse me, if we zoom on in, the stomach leads right into the first part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. So when we look at the small intestine, and there's our little soupy mixture called chyme, the chyme will exit the stomach and into the first part of the small intestine known as the duodenum. So overall, the small intestines are the location where, the nut where nutrients will be absorbed into your bloodstream. So the first part is called the duodenum. I've also heard it pronounced the duodenum. So what happens is as the, as the acidic chyme exits the stomach, there is a, uh, a molecule by the name of bicarbonate, which is basically baking soda that is released by the duodenum to help to neutralize the acids that are in the chyme. This way it prevents the acids from uh, damaging the, uh, the, the small intestine. And notice how there's a pear-shaped green object in the picture. This is called our gallbladder and it's releasing that letter B's in the animation that stands for bile. The gallbladder will help to release bile which will mix with the chyme to help break down any fats and lipids that are, are mixed in with our, our, the food that we've eaten. And notice how there's also an object labeled the pancreas that it's releasing letter E's in my animation. These are, these are symbolic of enzymes. The pancreas will release a variety of enzymes to break down lipids and proteins and carbohydrates and nucleic acids that happen to be in the foods that we've eaten. And if we come back to our diagram here of the small intestine, you can see the food sitting there in the first part known as the duodenum. But let's recap where we came from. The back of the throat is called the pharynx, and the tube that leads down is called the esophagus, and the esophagus leads into the stomach. And from the stomach, the soupy mixture called chyme enters the duodenum. Well, what happens next? Next, that soupy mixture called chyme passes through the jejunum, which is the second part of the small intestines. And this is the location where most nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream. And so if we zoom on in, here we see the jejunum, and here we see a capillary with blood traveling from left to right. And here's some of that soupy chyme. And as the chyme passes through the jejunum, nutrients are absorbed from the chyme and into the general circulation, into the capillary, into the, into the bloodstream that will take these nutrients all throughout the body. Well, there's a little secret. Let's zoom on in a little closer. And when we zoom on into the cells of the lining of the jejunum, we see that they have these little finger-like projections on them. These finger-like projections are called villi. These microscopic villi are really wonderful in increasing the surface area for nutrients to be absorbed through the bloodstream. So when we add our chyme nutrients, there's more area now for nutrients to uh, be absorbed into the bloodstream. But there's another secret that these villi hold. Let's zoom on into 
uh, a closer look. And when we zoom on in even closer, we see here are two villi. Villus is singular for villi. The villi themselves have tiny projections that are called microvilli, which add even more surface area for the absorption of nutrients. So when we add the soupy mixture called chyme, as the chyme passes through, nutrients from the chyme will pass into the capillaries that surround these and will lead the, take the nutrients all throughout the body and become part of the general circulation of our blood. So then we come to the final part of the small intestine known as the ileum. And the final part, the ileum, is where various vitamins and any remaining nutrients from the chyme will be absorbed. And then we pass into the large intestine. In the picture, it's the green area. Three main parts. Number one is called the ascending colon. Ascending means to come up. And as you see, our soupy chyme is moving up on the right side of our body. Notice there's also a little appendage sticking out here at the bottom of the ascending colon. And this is the appendix. And this is a, an organ structure that was uh, once thought to be uh, vestigial and really have no purpose. Now, it we think it has a very much a reduced purpose compared to uh, you know, other human ancestors. But what we're actually seeing is that the appendix is somewhat important in, um, in, in storing some of the beneficial bacteria that survive within our, our large intestines. And notice how now we have the what's called the transverse colon, which moves from the right side of the body to the left side of the body. And then ultimately, the part on the left side the, on our, of the body is called the descending colon. And ultimately, the soupy mixture chyme is traveling through the, through the three parts of the large intestine. And as it does, moisture is being extracted and removed from this soupy mixture chyme. Now, the longer the soupy mixture chyme is in the intestines, more water will be absorbed from it. So if you ever have had diarrhea, what's happened is you've had too little water removed from that soupy chyme, and when you went to the bathroom, it, the, your, your feces came out all runny and watery. Well, the kind of opposite of that is if your chyme, the soupy mixture chyme, is in your large intestines for too long of a time, too much water will be absorbed and the feces will be very solid and very hard to pass and that's what constipation is. And so the large intestine is also the home of many helpful bacteria that will assist in digestion and also the release of many vitamins that we need as part of our, as part of, as part of our nutrition. And ultimately, as the waste nears the exit, the waste is stored temporarily in the rectum until we have a appropriate convenient time where we can, you know, uh, make our way to a restroom. And ultimately then the feces will exit through the anus, which is a, a circular ring of muscle that will open to allow the feces out and hopefully into a toilet. And so as we round up this video here, pause the video and try to identify the letters of this diagram. I'm going to go over the answers in three, two, one. So picture A is one of the salivary glands. And at the back of the throat is picture B, which is the pharynx. Picture C is the flap that covers the trachea known as the epiglottis. Picture D would be the esophagus. Picture E is the stomach. Picture F is behind the stomach, that's the pancreas. G would be the duodenum, the first part of the small intestines. H would be the jejunum, which is the middle part of the small intestines where most nutrients are absorbed. I would be the end of the small intestines, the ileum. J would be the ascending colon, the first part of the large intestines. K would be the transverse colon 
and then L would be the descending colon. M would be the rectum, which stores feces, and then N would be the anus, the muscular ring where feces is excreted and released from. So I hope you found this video helpful on this quick tour of the digestive system. Thanks for watching.